Hello, everybody, ladies, gentlemen, attack helicopters, submarines, and giraffes. I don't know. Welcome to another episode of Agents of Chaos podcast. The giraffes are my favorite viewers. <laughs> uh, where order comes to die and chaos reigns. <sighs> I think that's going to yep. be our new tagline now. I thought I thought of this earlier, and it's just like that just fits really well. Let me just write that down. <laughs> Uh, as always, I am Crunch, and I've got QB and Scotty with me. Hello. And Scotty's in the back somewhere, presumably. He's having fun. Scotty. So, what are we talking about today? <laughs> well, before we go into that, this episode is fueled by, but not sponsored by, Coke Energy, because it's the only kind of energy drink I will ever touch. <laughs> I don't I don't drink energy. I don't understand energy drinks. I mean, it's literally just more or less just like a soda with just like shitloads more caffeine in it. And then they also try and uh, act like they're semi healthier by being like, oh, hey, we have zero sugar, even though they're full of artificial sweeteners that are arguably worse than uh, actual sugar. Yeah. I hate zero sugar. And uh, <laughs> fill it with all that sugar. You know, that's why the only energy drink type thing that I will ever touch is Coke Energies, because while it does still have, like, the usual stuff you'll find in a uh, soda, like, you know, good old high fructose corn syrup and whatnot, there is no artificial sweeteners in here. And, which to, be I, fair, though, I think, huh? uh, to be fair, though, I can't drink regular Coke anymore, because my teeth hurt. Yeah, no, uh, that's fair. Uh, yeah, anyway, you were saying? No, I was just saying, it's like, uh, the one other thing I hate was freaking artificial sweeteners. At least, like, the ones that are used as a majority for, uh, energy drinks, they have this really bad aftertaste. It's like, as soon as I taste the stuff, it's like, I know it's in there. It's like, I don't even have to look at the ingredients to know it's there. And then, of course, once I taste it and I look at the ingredients, I was like, of course it's in there. Yeah. Just horrible. Yep. Anyway, yep. <laughs> on today's episode of the podcast, we are going to be talking about animes that we want to have continuations. Literally, it's like just anything that if it hasn't had another season in a while, we want more. More. Or it's like if it has one of those things that we also love and enjoy, and I say that, of course, in the biggest of air quotes. The fucking read the source material endings, which can go to hell. What are you talking about? The read the source material endings are like the worst parts of all anime. Ugh. Uh, and we have a well, lot to talk about today, because I think we've got like 11 on this list that we've put together, but given well, the way that we... <laughs> yeah. Huh? Technically, the, technically, the first one we'll be talking about is kind of funny in that yeah. it actually... I had this video, and then something hilarious happened a couple of days ago on the yeah. time of recording this. Yeah, so pretty much like, yeah, as Kiwi said, the, we were talking about uh, this uh, idea, and this was like the first one that came to mind for both of us. And then like a couple of days ago, it just got announced to get a sequel after seven fucking years. It's Eight Devil years. is a Part-Timer. Eight years, actually. <laughs> It's even longer than you thought. Ugh. But yeah, Sadao, Mao, and the and the gang is coming back, and we're just like, yay! Yeah. More Josh Grell being a uh, McDonald McRonald's worker. More <laughs> sense. Uh. This this season should just have him take over and rename it Mao Mao. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it! I can see you're trying to work that into a uh, thing. I don't think that's gonna work. Go to McDonald's. Well, let's all go to McDonald's and have a nice meal. It wasn't in the dub. It was like McRonald's or some shit. I'm just cool. thinking of just an anime. Anime McDo McDonald's is usually just repurposed to McDonald's. Yeah, I know. It's just flip That's the dub. Flip one, the M upside yeah. down. It's not the same, guys. We swear. <laughs> but yeah, for those who don't know this series, basically it's a reverse isekai where you have. 
the Demon Lord and a bunch of other characters from a fantasy world get so teleported like his... to our world where they so have like... no magic. And so the only thing that they can do to survive is actually take up jobs in our world. And our main character is a freaking part-time worker at a McDonald's stand-in. And it's absolutely hilarious. Well, it's not just... It's like the devil, his minions, the the hero, hero in big quotation marks, in this type of fantasy story, who's basically Cinderella. Oh, yeah. It's just hilarious. I like, I like your name. Baka. <laughs> it's just, like, really funny, like, watching them interact with each other and, like, just the chemistry of... Uh, these characters, yeah. it's just what makes it really fun. And, um, yeah, no, like yeah. season one ended on a pretty decent note from what I remember because it's been a little while since I saw the uh, show. But it still was one of those cases where, like, it left you wanting more. And, you know, eight it, years later, here we are. We're actually finally getting more. Holy crap. It didn't have Freak the Source, but it just, it's one of those things where when you wanted more because it, it kind of it had a decent, it had. It only had like how many episodes? Thirteen, wow. twelve episodes. Yeah, only had twelve episodes. Yeah. No, I think it's just like as I was saying earlier. It's that the chemistry between the characters made you want to see more. Like it was very much like it wasn't the kind of thing where you know it's everything is like building up to something major or whatever. It's very much slice of lifey kind of show. But just the way that the characters interacted with each other, you know, you felt, well, you grew to love the, that, and you love the characters, and that's why you want to see more of it. And then, like, I guess, like, the one overarching thing would, like, basically be, it's like, hey, would they ever actually find be able to find a way home, and would they actually leave if they could, that kind of thing. Yeah, actually, it's funny because it was an it was an isekai or a, well, no, that is a it was an isekai before isekais became the biggest thing in anime because they are still massive in anime. Like they've been massive for years, but this was back when they were like a new concept. When season, so it's kind of weird seeing a season two in this in the world we're in today compared to the world we were in eight years ago, which was amazingly and horrifyingly completely different from now. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. Like, this was the show that inspired this topic, and holy fuck, it's actually getting one. So, who knows? Maybe the other they ones knew. on our list will actually have some hope. You see, see, they secretly knew we were making this video, and that's why they dropped it right <laughs> now. <laughs> anyway, speaking of uh, the others on our list, where shall we go next? Where? What's next on the list, sir? I literally just like shoved these in. I didn't put these in any particular order. So you pick one. Well, since it's the next one in line, and this this will be one where it's mostly you talking. Uh, Talentless Nana, because I saw you okay. watch this. Okay. <sighs> this one was about. It was a really interesting one, and it was about. It was basically. It was basically among us as an anime so basically there was like this concept of this world is there were like these children born with space like my hero academia where there are these children born with superpowers but they were also like but they were being like they would they were like sent to these the schools the school to like get trained how to use their powers to fight the supposed evil that threatens to destroy the world but the government thinks that they are the evil. They'll eventually destroy the world with their power. So they send in an assassin who's basically pretends to be one of them. And she basically goes around goes around um murking them <laughs> throughout the whole yeah, she goes around like fighting the different ones because they've all got different powers, so she needs to outsmart them because it's like trying to take on someone with a superpower is wit and she doesn't have any powers, but she only has her wits and and just what she has around her. But yeah. So, but what happened is it had a normal like twelve episode on, and then the story just stops. And I really want it to get more because a continuation. Because from from what I've understand about the manga, the manga ch changes story after the after where the anime 
leaves off. So it's kind of a good point to end it, but it's also, if this is all we get, and it's kind of like, is that it? Yeah, so that's kind of like the the thing about this series. It's kind of kind of bugged me about the ending as well. I don't know if I call read the, read the source because it doesn't like tease you like other series do, where it goes like where it sets where it sets up this massive thing. It kind of does a little bit, but it doesn't like if it just kind of stops. The story does, but yeah, I'd love to see more personally. Yeah, I'd still need to, like, watch this one. Either, like, eventually just buckle down and watch it subbed or hope that Funimation gets around to hitting the yeah, dub right. uh, treatment. Especially with, like, the it. way they've been doing them now, where, like, they keep uh, just punching out ones in big old batches as opposed like, like, the weekly, every like, every week or every few weeks or whatever thing that they've been doing. I do think it's worth watching, but... The ending is just kind of like because it builds to something, and I and I like what it builds to with the ending, but it just kind of stop the story just stops, and that what and that's what annoys me. Yeah, I hate those. There's there's one on this list that we will be talking about later that does that exact thing, and it just gets on my and man, did that I, one get on my nerves. We will get to that one later. I don't think it's as bad as the one you're thinking of, but yeah, we will get to that one. Which one is next, good sir? All right, next one that I had plugged in here is one that a lot of us are rather familiar with, High School DxD. Oh, the the best (laughs) one. And, yeah, this needs more. Like, (laughs) because, like, for those who aren't familiar with this one, it's basically dude ends up becoming part of a group of devils, and it's very much a lot of harem nonsense but there's also like a lot of shonen style action it's a very interesting merging of just like a lot of different um genres and it works really well it's also had a very uh tumultuous history shall we say with uh some of the adaptation works it's it's adaptations from what i understand are because well it was specifically it's specifically season three, like born, because T and K, the studio that had it at the time, kind of got a little kooky with the way that they did the adaptation for that one, and basically, none of the fans who knew the source material were very happy with it. Even the author of the light novel themselves stated they weren't too particularly happy with it, and so T and K got given the boot and the franchise was handed over to studio passion but even when they did that there was another choice that they made which was a little bit of an oddball decision and yeah it's just weird and also i do know that a lot of the fan base was not too thrilled with the uh art style change it's like the thing is though i think i've talked about this with i've sort of this is something with this show, a lot of people like sort of just took it face value and just went through the show and they didn't see the adaptation problems. Well, like that's why that's why he, he, that's why season four is such like a a robot for a lot of people. Well, like speaking from my own personal experience from watching it, yeah, it's kind of it's very bizarre to go through it because essentially, like I. Started watching it. I binge blasted through like all f- of the first three seasons, and like everything, like pretty much flowed and gelled together pretty well. But then you hit season four, and there's just like, wait, what happened? It's like, why yeah. is the art style different? Why is there references to events that we didn't actually see animated? Wait, what? What is going on? And then you go looking into it, and it's like, oh, all this stuff happened. And it's like, well, that's awkward. But what they just skipped over a good chunk of what so uh, to break this down a little bit farther here what happened was is that when tnk was doing season three um actually back up just slightly a bit more when they were doing uh the adaptations for season one and two what they did was they took two volumes worth of material for each season so season one had 
material from volumes one and two of the light novel. Season two had three and four. And then when they got to season three, instead of just picking five and six and making them work, which from what I understand of those um, nov- or volumes, they could have easily done that. But instead they decided to uh, cherry pick bits and pieces out of volume five, six, and seven, put all put these uh, events out of order, and then on top of that, cut out a lot of like very important stuff, as well as slide in like two or three episodes of anime only content for no reason whatsoever. And that, it's just the end thing. Yeah, it's like the last couple of episodes where oh. like they do this thing, which is kind of cool. But then they end up doing a renege on it anyway, because there's like a moment where it's assumed that I think like Rias and Ise kind of have like a confession style moment, but then they have this whole uh, renege on it where it's like, oh yeah, I, this stuff happened, but I don't remember any of it or whatever. It's so stupid. And to say the least, it's like nobody liked what happened, liked the fact that they did that. And then when Studio Passion came in and took over, instead of, like, going back and, like, redoing all that stuff and, like, putting it in a proper order or whatever, they skipped doing that. They also bounced over Volume 8, which had a setting which I know a lot of people would have loved to have seen animated, where I think Issei and Rias have to go on, like, a small training course by themselves. Where they get tested by the four devil kings and uh, Grafia. And and the five of them are dressed up as basically Power Ranger knockoffs. Calling themselves like the Satan Rangers. Wait, wait. You said Grafia. Hold on a minute. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. You horned dog. (laughs) And it's just like... Did I just hear Power Rangers? Yes. (laughs) There you go, that's him. And the worst part is, though, is that, like, for a uh, hero, they actually reference, they make reference to the fact that this happens. But I'm like, what the fuck? I don't remember seeing that. Was that, like, an OVA or something? It's like, no. Yeah. It's a volume that just got completely shot over. Do you want know what that reminds me of? Huh. There's, like, have you heard of a show called Red Dwarf? I've heard of it. I've seen a, I think I've I. I've heard and seen it. I'm th- there's there's yeah. um there's a bit there's like so basically eight like nine seasons in they do like a like eight seasons in they do a special and they sort of reference the fact that there was a that there's a se- they reference stuff that happened in a in in a supposed season nine that we never see anything of but they reference it all the time and be like yeah no this happened as well <laughs> it's like wow they back. <laughs> I'll be honest, I just want to uh, see more DXD just for more Kona Kosas. I mean, yeah, no. It's just, I want to see more of this just because, like, I know for a fact and from doing my own, like, side research, there is so much more content that this franchise has in it. Like, there is light novels worth of, like, probably another three or four seasons. I mean, this sucker's still going. They could keep this this could be one of the new long-running ones if they wanted to do that. And I just I want to it... see more of it because I want to see more of, you know, Issei's relationship with these girls growing because it is actually, like, really cute the way that uh, they all interact together. And then on top of that, you have, at the end of Season 4, freaking Issei and Rias finally confessing to each other. It's like, oh, that's cute. I want to see more of this. But, well, you know, that... we're... I think three years out, and so far we haven't seen anything new about a possible season five or anything like that. Oh yeah, Crunch, I just looked it up. See, for the light novel, the original one ended in 2018 with 25 volumes, so yeah, they do have quite a lot if they only did two volumes a season. Well, I mean, the original, yeah, the original one ended for like in 20, for 25 volumes, but like the current one that's going, like I think it's called like Shin DXD or some shit like that. It's literally just continuing off of, uh, the original run, so like it's still going. Is that like so? It's beyond like hi- they're adults. 
I don't even know if it's like just that. Like I think it just literally like picks up. It's just I think they like just rebranded the title just for the sake of I don't know rebranding or some shit. I don't know. I haven't really like, looked think... the, at fully into it. Okay, by the way, you, but by the way, I used to have a more negative opinion on DXT, but now I think it's all right. Please leave me alone. <laughs> I'm I'm looking at the Wikipedia. There's an there's an OVA called just literally called I'm enveloped in breasts. I need to watch. <laughs> yes, that. that exists. That exists. Uh, yeah, I think like a bunch of the OVAs and stuff that they made for uh, the anime. It's either like bits of the light novel that did not get uh, adapted for the main episodes, or uh, just some fun silly <laughs> side stuff that they came up with for the anime. I, I I want to see the bit in the light novels where they where they gender pent. Just to see what the fuck, because that happened. <laughs> there is, yeah, no, there's like so much nonsense that happens in the light novels that like would be funny as heck to see on screen. Like, uh, I've seen like pictures from like drawing, like from light novel illustrations of like some of Issei's other abilities that he gets his hands on. I know some of the other like things that happen to him. Mm-hmm. And it's just like. I want to see all this animated. Give me more, damn it. I mean, there's only one thing I want to see. R- uh, Rias is healing beams. Have you seen those? <laughs> That's, yeah, I think I know what you're talking about vaguely. That, I think I remember reading exists. about those and just laughing my ass off. Yeah, that ex- that, ex- that, that exists. Me, yes, it has to do with her chest. Of course. Yes. She fi- she fires laser beams out of her tits and they heal eat they heal the main character but they they cause her chest to shrink. And yeah, he gets depressed I about that it. Now. Yeah, and he gets depressed about it. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm guessing when they recharge, they grow. Yeah, yes. Okay, uh, that has to be animated. Uh, <laughs> I have I have literally only heard one thing about DXD from a friend of mine that literally Issei got banned from a tournament. I'd believe it. Probably in the light novels. Yeah, I'd believe it. But, but yeah, because according, according to my pal, he said, "Oh, EC was banned because the guy was like, yeah, you're too strong. I can't have you fight." <laughs> I mean, considering some of the bullshit in the the bullshit in that series, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I plus, this, fight like... in this competition. <laughs> and plus, I would just love to like have more of this be dubbed by the. Uh... Funimation dub cast because like they are just a riot for uh the show. Josh Grell doing Issei is just hysterical, and some of the lines that he was given to read. Oh uh, my gosh, it's had me crunch. on the floor dying. Crunch, crunch, uh, crunch. I need more. J- I need more Jad. I need more Jad. That's all oh, I yeah. want. <laughs> oh yeah, you got Jad playing Konako. That's always fun, and you have like Bryn April being Akano, which is. Absolutely beautiful. Of course, it's so beautiful. And then, of course, you can't. Uh, sorry, go ahead, Scotty. I still remember when I joined you, DL, and that when you were watching, I think it was Hero, and I got, I basically jumped into the part where he said, goes, Summon back, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That was, in a, that was season four. Mm. The Zomboobies outbreak. Oh, that was hilarious. There's just so much. Start drinking. <laughs> There's so much dumb. Like the show is completely dumb, but at the same time, like it's so much fun. If you can enjoy one. pervy silliness and also <laughs> love a little bit of shonen action, because there's a bunch of that. Also, you have freaking Chris Sabat inside of Josh Grell's hand. That's fun. Oh, bring back Rainier. <laughs> Yeah, right. As much as I like Renair's design, that's not going to happen. I can dream, do it. <laughs> give, yeah. her an alter- it- give her a spin-off where she exists in an alternate timeline. Where she's the main character. <laughs> I would honestly watch that. That'd be entertaining. Yeah. Just to see what kind of anyway. shit she gets up to. So, uh, what's next on the list? Next up, I've got Cabaneri plugged in, which I have not seen this one, so uh, this is another one of those uh, you're going to be doing Scott. all the talking. Yay! You all get to hear my voice now. Um, right, Cabaneri is basically a tag titan, except on a train and it's steampunk, and they're fighting steampunk zombies. And I want more of this, because just that concept is amazing. 
And also you got like like a uh, like a version of uh, like a girl who's based like Mikasa who's basically just destroying everyone. Uh you know, I just want more of it. I honestly, because it only got like twelve episodes, and the second half is kind of eh, because it tries to introduce a vi- it tries to introduce like a human villain into the story, and it's just like, what are you doing here? Can we go back to them destroying those the steampunk zombies? <laughs> you know, I just want it to get like more episodes because it was like it was one of Studio Wit's attempts to because uh, it was done by Studio Wit. It was directed by the same guy who directed the first season of Attack on Titan, so it's very like that, but yeah. Also, I, the animation is, like, 10 out of 10. Like, I think, like, it could even, like, out, it could, like, parts of it could have outdone, like, Attack on Titan for what they were doing at the time. And, yeah, some of the designs are really good. I just love yeah. that you, like, describe this as, like, a human villain gets introduced, and it's just, like, can we go back to fighting the monsters, and, like, how much I've seen certain um, people complaining about AOT for pulling that exact same shit in the later uh, material. Yeah, but it's more like it's one guy. It's one guy who's basically a muster. Who's basically just the most unsubtle villain ever. And it's just like, wow. It's just that there isn't like. Here's the thing: Attack on Titan built up to that twist. This guy literally just walks onto the screen, and you look at him and go. Oh, hey, look, it's the bad guy. Ah, okay, so it's a matter One of... of the, it's, an, it's a matter of execution yeah. on the, uh... So what, could they, are we talking he walks on stage in a Nazi uniform with the moustache, wearing a very, very evil-looking unif- uh, cloak and going... No, no, <laughs> no not, not that subtle. Not that subtle. <laughs> we, don't have, we don't have Aaron busting out behind him from something. That's cool. Ugh, that bit. Yeah, no, it's like because I like, attack on. I think like you said, Attack on Titan had time to build up to it. Just I think this only had like twelve or thirteen episodes, if I remember correctly. So it was one of those kind of. It was just like a one off, and it had like a movie. But I'd honestly want more because it's steampunk Attack on Titan on a train. Was this one dubbed or not? I don't remember. I don't think it was. I remember I think like. It wasn't- because like I remember seeing this in like the some of the anitubers I follow like on their seasonal watch videos when this one was running around. It's like this sounds cool, and also they said the magic words of Attack on Titan, but it just it was one of those ones that I just never got around to looking at. It was I'm actually looking at. It's, it's been licensed by Funimation for distribution, but I'm gonna go at dub. But they get dub actually, according to this. Did it? Oh, did it? I never. Oh, did, did it? I never saw it. <laughs> it might have been because I was watching it at the time. There you go, Crunch. It has a dub. Cool. I'll have to like look into that at some point. Yeah, let me actually look quickly. Uh... Uh, if it's handled by Funimation, then it's probably a lot of their uh, regulars since they have I mean, a think uh, preset the, 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 pool. There's a few regulars, but then we have guys like Chris Neosi. Roger Craig Smith. Yeah, it sounds like it's a lot of the uh, usual boys. Uh, yeah, no, this one's not like this one isn't like DXD where it's like there's like four seasons out already and you could do more. This is just day. Hey, can we have some more, please? Can I have some more, please, Governor? <laughs> uh. More? You want more? No. <laughs> Uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah, let's go to the next one. Next one is one that uh, I hold near and dear, and also is one that I actually own physically. Chivalry of a Failed Knight, another light novel adapt that needs more anime. The because... Adventures of the Adventures of the Queen <laughs> and, and her serv- <laughs> and her master. Oh gosh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so basically the concept of this series, for those unfamiliar, is just do- magical nights at a uh, school, or it's another high school style show, but it's like, you have all these characters who are have magical abilities and whatnot, training to be, like, I guess, knights of a sort, but then the main character 
has barely any magical potential whatsoever, but he's a really good swordsman, so he's, like, known as the worst of the lot. And then you've got the main girl, who's, like, super talented, and what, and she's also, like, a princess, and essentially, like, essentially, very early on, these two end up, like, falling in love, and becoming a couple, and it's really adorable, and then all this other shit goes on, but, like, I want more of this because the end of the anime clearly is setting up for, like, some bigger stuff. Like, the whole anim- uh, season is, like, a tournament-style thing where it's like, all right, all the students compete in these matches to gain uh, the right to go on to participate in this, like, even bigger tournament. And then the season ends with, like, uh, it's like, all right, here's are your representatives for that thing, but... Yeah, we know we actually get to see what happens in that thing. And, like, from what I understand, there's, like, a lot more other drama stuff that goes on, too, which I really want to see. And, like, this it's, is another one of those cases where, like, all the characters have some really good chemistry together. I think Icky and Stella, the two mains, are, like, cute as fuck. I ship the hell out of them, which, of course, is great since they actually are together. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, I want more. I just want to see more of the cat fights between Stella and Iki's little sister. Oh, yeah. <laughs> fight. Let those, them fight. Those cat fights are really good. They just the fucking slander. They try and throw each other. Oh, yeah. No, like that one scene in the uh, episode, I think it was like three, where like they're stuck in the bathroom after making a scene on campus. And like they're just think... yelling. They're just like saying names, insulting each other's chest size the whole time. <laughs> I think yeah, what? basically this is yeah, basically this is the this is the Asterix War, but good. Yeah, for those who are familiar with that series. <laughs> Which, uh, if you are familiar, we're sorry. <laughs> I still just find it criminally unfair that like Asterix War actually got a second season, whereas this one did not. Although, given the studio that it. shat it out, to oh uh, yeah, I'm I'm gonna. I'm yeah. I'm just gonna say the studio. They love pushing. They love just. They are the McDonald's of anime studios. Well, I mean, like at least back then they used to be. It feels like they've slowed down a little bit. They're, like, they're what they're putting now, out like, now is of much better quality. Yeah, it's but at least they're putting out stuff like Kaguya Sama, which is all, which is better. They've slowed down the. They like back when this is a side tangent. Back when Asterix War came out, producing like. 10 shows a year or something stupid number like that. And now they're only producing like two or three. Yeah. And you can definitely see the quality difference for their product now, as opposed to what it used to be. The studio in question that we're talking about is a one pictures for those who don't know. uh, A one pictures, a one pictures, the comic, the comedy show of the anime community. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, so here we have generic Kirito, generic Kirito code number one, generic Kirito code number two, generic Kirito code well, number three. Well, no, generic back in the day, there was like a joke about how every single one of their protagonists look the same. Like like Crunch said, it's better now, but like if you go back like a couple of years, like, a lot of their protagonists had like the same face. Yeah. I remember yeah. uh, Digibro when he was doing his entire like series on Asterisk War, he would be purposely calling the main character like, different names every single time. Was... And I was like, for a while I didn't quite understand why he was doing that, but then it's like, when you go back and rewatch it later on, it's like, ha, I get it. Because yeah. like, all their faces are freaking the same and shit, it's just so dumb. I want, yeah, no, I want more of Chivalry just for the, them to break the aspect ratio again. <laughs> Oh, yeah. That's one of the best bits. Uh, there's, yeah. a character, there's a character who's so powerful, they break the aspect ratio. <laughs> yeah, that is such a great little sight gag. Yeah. Plus, the art style for Chivalry really was something with the black and red. Contrast. Yeah, like in the opening. Yeah, which I do love how, like, they did that whole bit for the opening, and then, like, the very last episode, they actually, like, execute this awesome little, like, I think like one or two minute sequence where they're using that coloring scheme and it's just so beautifully done. 
Like, Silverlink mm-hmm. knocked it out of the parks when they did this one. It's probably, like, one of their best shows. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely up there. And as I said, like, this is one of the few shows that of this type where it's like, I want to own this physically, and so I do. I have the blue mm-hmm. ring sitting looking. off to my left. Mm-hmm. It's actually the first stuff. anime uh, Blu-ray that I purchased. Oh, yeah, they did both for me. Hmm. Because we here at the Chaos Podcast support the official release. <laughs> yep. Yes, we do. Why Unless we you can't find it. it. <laughs> Unless you can't find it, then uh, go nuts. <laughs> then it's yar har fiddle dee dee. Raise the black flag, boys. <laughs> you know, I love how like some uh, like a certain somebody that we all know has a uh, loves talking about that one company that like keeps resurrecting anime from the dead. Uh, what was it, Discotech or whatever? Yeah, Discotech Media. Yeah, there's one show that I really wish they would actually get their hands on, but I won't. It's, uh, I'll believe that one when I see it. Oh, which one's that? Mars Daybreak. I'd love to actually uh, like get uh, that one legally without having to go through eBay. Ooh. Anyway. Next one. Next one is the one that I was teasing earlier. Oh the, no. The I'm show the, that I'm has the probably one of the most infuriating resource material endings I've ever seen in my life. Fucking non baka. Let me get my tin hat on. Uh so we've talked about this show before on one of our like our first episode. episode. Yeah. And already back, already back to it. <laughs> well, Dude. I mean, it's just too much fun. Like yeah. you know, as we probably said on that one, it's like the character interactions with all of the uh inmates, it's real they're really well done. The voice acting is fantastic. Music is great. The art style is just eye drop as like just eye catching to know and just mm-hmm. everything that goes on in this show is just really, really good. And, and you know, of course, it's a comedy series. The comedy is like on point most of the time. Yeah, folks, we need to head forward. This is a comedy show. <laughs> but Mark there's a comedy, <laughs> It's like, this is funny, right? Come on, laugh. God, I still okay. love this. Ricardo Ferrardo doing the uh, announcer, dude. Oh, this was so much fun. But uh, <laughs> but the thing that sucks with this show is when season two rolled around. Because season two started like really building up towards something. And when you get to the very last episode, basically, you know, since this is an older show i'm gonna just go ahead and play spoiler mode essentially what happens is is that there's apparently like a very powerful um prisoner in this uh non in the namba prison who used to be like one of the uh not wardens uh super yeah he was like one of the guards like one of the superintendents or like or no war uh not warden because the warden's like the overall uh but basically, he ran one of the cell blocks. But, to say the least, he kind of got a little out of control, and to the point where, like, everyone else had to, like, team up against him. Supervisor and... Crunch. Supervisor. Yeah. He was one of the cell block supervisors, and essentially, in season two, he gets out and starts causing trouble, and so everyone's, like, trying their best to deal with him. And the very last episode has um, Hajime and 13, because for some reason my freaking brain is not remembering his name. Go, what is freaking Jugo? There we go. Yeah. Yeah. So it's got Hajime and Jugo. Literally, the last shot of this thing is like the two of them walking towards where this big bad is going is supposedly hanging out. Like, they're going to have this big, epic final battle type moment. And then, cut. Season just ends. And it is just the biggest cock tease in the world. And, like, I remember I was watching this with some of uh, our mutual friends, and 
none of us were happy about that one. And the mm-hmm. the worst part of it was is that at the time, because normally when I um, do anime hangouts with uh, these friends of ours, normally it's stuff that I have seen all the way through, and I'll be like, okay, you know, this could be fun to uh, show them and all that stuff. This was one of those cases where I hadn't actually finished it. I had seen the majority of it, so I didn't even know that it was going to do that until, like, I started seeing the timer and realizing, oh, shit, I didn't know exactly what they're about to do, and this is not good. And just like, ah. Uh. But to say the least, yeah, I want more of this if just to, like, come back, just if nothing else, just to get that conclusion for that whole setup that they did. Cause Take the piss out that ending. Well, yeah. yeah but, okay, I'm de- I've decided to just jump on the wiki because, well, the other guy that usually does that isn't here. The manga thought it's still ongoing. Yeah. yeah, like, I just... I don't understand what happened there with this one. Like, why did they adapt it that way? I think they were trying to... Look, so the problem is, anime. a lot of anime exists just to promote the manga. Yeah, like, I understand that. But Maybe I, they were just like... just They were just like, like we don't want to make any more, just promote the manga. Uh, it's... All I know is, like, that is probably, so far, in, like, with all the anime that I've seen, and especially all the ones that do have that, like, lead-off to doing, you know, the whole go-read-the-source material or hope that there's another season coming out kind of thing, this Mm -hmm. one, I feel like, right now, tops as the worst one to pull that stunt. And I'm just like, ugh. And it, like I said, it really sucks, too, because, like, we have, like, all of this, like, everything working towards the show being, like, really good. And even, like, with Season 2, as part of it, you start, like, learning more about some of the other inmates from the other cell blocks that um, these characters have had interactions with in Season 1. Like, some of the ones that they fought against in their little tournament arc thing, you start learning more about these characters, and you get to know them better. And it's like, oh, that's really cool. And then, uh, friggin' it ends like that, and we haven't had any word of anything continuing. It's just like, uh... That's all, folks. Yeah, it stinks. Yep. So yeah, this is definitely a high one for if it ever gets a continuation, I would be the happiest person ever. Like, I would even... I would even accept just doing the thing that I know a lot of anime tend to get, where they just do movie retellings, where it's just very much like a truncated version of the series into like a format of like two or three hour movies. Just give us a conclusion to that whole sequence. Like, I want to see Hajime and Jugo teaming up to kick this guy's ass. Like, Mm. because that would just be fun as hell. Mm. Especially yeah. considering, you know, the way Hajime and Jugo play off of each other as characters. It's so much fun to watch them. And again, I'm pretty sure Jugo can't do anything except escape from this, so... Well, I mean, he's got the whole, you know, blade thing. Oh, and the blade thing, yeah. <laughs> Let's not forget that. Forgot about the blade thing. Well, yeah, because yeah. unfortunately we don't get any resolution for that little plot point either. Yeah. But at least it was like, I'd re- even if we never get a plot a conclusion for that on it like animated at least give us an ending for what season 2 built up to well just setting up something it's a problem setting up something and then giving you nothing fuck you yeah it's a yeah. massive fuck you and I hate it uh, anyway so moving on moving on we have on. we have a show that came out not last... Uh, was this one last year? Was it two years ago? Whatever it was. Toilet Bound Hanako. That was last year. Okay, so yeah. Obviously, it's probably... Considering it was just last year, it's probably a little early to be screaming for more, but at the same time, we literally did that with Nana a few minutes ago. But yeah, no, I this mean, is... I mean, Luce are more reliable than other studios, so maybe... But, yeah, no, like, this show was a lot of fun to watch. 
it didn't end on like one of those read the source material endings kind of things, it but it's, fine, it had a fine ending, but there were still plot points set up that it didn't go into. Yeah, no, like there is definitely a lot that was set up during the season that easily tie in or like start threads for a second season and obviously this is also based on a manga which i'm sure has like plenty of volumes that they could work off of should they want to and i really want them to because for one the art style for this series is fucking gorgeous like if nothing else check this shit out for the art style because it is like unlike anything i've seen in a lot of anime it very much I feel. I it, do have one question, though. Sorry, huh? I, have, I, have, I have one question. Huh? Would you like some daikon? <laughs> uh. Yeah, one of the recurring jokes is about one of the about the main female character is her legs look like daikons, right? Yeah, something like that. For some reason, yeah. because Japan. <laughs> But yeah, no, like the whole premise of it is just really fun. Which the premise of it is basically, um, main character gets intertwined with uh, a ghost that lives in the girl's bathroom, and uh, she gets sucked into this whole world of like supernatural stuff that happens around the school, and like it's really fun, and it's really kind of uh, yeah, it's just fun. Uh I like how it builds up this world, even though it's just a school. They make it feel like there's like this expanse within it. Yeah, because like, there's like, whole world within it because there's like dimensions and stuff. Yeah, there's going like, through. Yeah, yeah. There's like other dimensions, and then you've got like the way some of these supernatural things are like tied into like legends and stuff. Like there's one whole episode, or at least most of an episode, where like. They're dealing with one thing, and they introduce the whole concept of like how these natural or like these supernatural wonders and stuff inside of the school are tie are um, changed by how uh, word spreads about them. So it's like they're like urban legends and stuff, and like depending on what is said in the legends, that's how these some of these uh, creatures behave. So like when so to like fix one of the issues, they actually like start modifying the legend a little bit like they start and like you actually see it take cold and it's like really cool seeing how all that can shift and whatnot and then there's just like there's also like this mystery around hanako himself like why does he carry a knife around what's his deal between him and his uh twin brother that shows up later on which I love how the intro completely spoils the fact that he's there, but if you're not paying attention, you wouldn't actually realize it. I love I love evil Hanako. That's what I, I know. I know his name, but I'm just like. Evil. Well, I also evil. just love the fact that, like, in the dub, it's just like who plays these two characters because you have Hanako being voiced by Justin Briner, and then you have his twin brother being voiced by Austin Tyndall. And anyone who is familiar with Austin Tyndall and how he does chaotic characters he's just a riot and just the two of them playing off of each other is just so good it's like i want more of this all we're saying is the dub is good as well oh yeah no absolutely 100 percent. watch the sucker dubbed if you can this might be one that i'll uh, probably add to my shelf whenever uh this gets physical release if it hasn't already if it gets released over here i probably will too oh yeah um I want, uh, you just, yeah, no, it's just, there is just a lot of stuff that I'm just like, it was cool, the ending we were given, but I want to know, like, the stuff with that girl and evil Hanako. Yeah, and yeah. then also, it's just like, there is also the thread of, like, you know, what uh, the main girl ended up doing to herself in the first episode. It's like, does that ever get resolution? Because you see, you see, like, that thread return at the very last episode, but mm -hmm. you know it doesn't get like the um the resolution of like oh this is now fixed forever. No, this is still going to be a problem at some point. It's just a matter of when is it going to come back or like how are they going to fix it if they ever do kind of thing. 
I think the manga is still going, so it probably hasn't even been revealed there yet. Probably not. I don't know. I'm actually curious. Anyway. I wonder how many volumes this actually has now. <sighs> yeah. Da, 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 but yeah, I know. Like, this is definitely a high one for I want more of it. Also, I just have to say the little fox spirit that Alexis Tipton voices in this show is absolutely fucking adorable when she's in her fox form. I would want a yeah, great. Uh, <laughs> so you've got to give it give it the head pats. Uh, fifteen volumes. Oh, so they've got like so much material they could probably pull from. Yeah, um, yeah. Though the seat, the whole. Yeah, depends. So we'll have to wait and see what happens. But uh, next one. Next one is one that for a lot of us has a very silly nickname. The Horny Sentai, also known as Super Exeros. I love Horny Sentai. <laughs> and the only reason why we even call it that is because it's a group of five teenagers fighting off uh, bug-styled monsters with the power of horniness. I mean, what I, else is really I, there to say about it? <laughs> I remember when Tokusatsu was good, but we'll talk about that another time. Uh, yeah, so this is basically just one that you just sit there and you just look at and go, wait, and then you watch it again and you go, this is brilliant. This is amazing. <laughs> and then you just go, you still just go at the end of it, what? <laughs> it ended so quickly. I want more. <laughs> yeah, um, so it's basically them fighting insect-based villains because why not? I'm guessing this is a reference to something. To a certain something we all know. Probably, I don't know. And love and hate. We have a love-hate relationship with. Uh, and yeah, this is um, playing Koi, it's called Common Rider. Because <laughs> they have a lot I of bug Dragon. monsters in that franchise. Uh, well, to be fair, though, writer, the writers, most writers are based on insects. That's also but, yeah. true. Uh, yeah, no, yeah. basically just... The short premise of it is, it's just aliens called Kiseichu, which are basically like, as I believe in the manga, they're called sensor bugs. They come to Earth and they want to essentially get rid of anything that makes uh, humans uh, horny. So that basically we will uh, stop having kids and thus uh, just de end up dying off and then they can take over the planet. But then you have these chuckleheads that are on my screen right now that fight against them with the power of their teenage hormones. And it's absolutely stupid as it sounds, and it's also amazing at the same time. Yeah, uh, yeah, you should watch it. <laughs> no, go, go watch it. Drop no, everything now and go and watch it. In real life, their plan wouldn't work because there's many people on this earth that just cannot stop being horny. Oh yeah, no. I mean, no, they'd over, they'd overload. Well, I mean, like friggin', you know, minor spoilers here, but like friggin', the yellow one, the one with the blonde hair on the screen right now. They tried to do that to her, and her, um, energy, <laughs> her horny energy and was too much, and it's just like, how can one human be this perverted? So it's like, yeah, no, that whole plan would never work, IRL. Yeah, but um, this is basically just a thing of we just want more. Pretty it's much, one yeah. One. So this is a simple one. These insects arrive, they take one look into the minds of Japanese anime fans, and they go, oh, fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> well, not only that, but it's just like, from what I understand with this show, part of, uh, or like, this is another, like, it's not really an issue per se that they did it, but like, this is another one of those cases where they did a lot of cherry picking with the adaptation and also did a few things in an oddball order. Cause like, again, minor spoilers here. Um, or I guess, well, spoilers anyway, like the intro shows them off, shows them using like these cool suits for fighting, but you never see them until the very last episode. And then I think, like, in the manga, they actually get them a lot earlier than this particular showdown that they show off in the show. So it's just like, why did you guys do that? And there's also, like, a bunch of other stuff that gets, like, 
skipped over and whatnot. So it's like it would be kind of cool to see them like maybe go backwards a little bit and uh, readapt some of that stuff. Because like I know there's like a whole episode where uh, one of the characters disguised as a dog sneaks into uh, the pink-haired one's school and just starts causing all kinds of trouble. Actually, I think they might have done that as an OVA. I'm not 100 percent sure, but uh, what, what we're getting what we're getting here with this uh, episode of this podcast is that uh, adapt ad, uh, companies adapting stuff are sometimes bad at it. Uh, I mean, like and they need some, to go back and fix it. Well, like there's some points where like you can get away with it if your fans obviously don't pay attention to it, but like and like with the way that this is done. It's not a case of, like, oh, the fact that they cut around certain things hurts it that much. It's just a case of, like, I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, what I, I, know, I know what you mean. You're saying it's something like DXD Season 3. <laughs> yeah, no, that one is a case of, yeah, you guys fucked up. You fucked up now. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, so I think we've Anyway, yeah, uh, this isn't about selling, selling toys, except uh, not not those types of toys. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I had to go there. Yeah, You're correct with the anime for Exodus. There's twelve episodes, and then with the eleventh manga volume and the twelfth volume, there was two. There was an OVA bundled with each of the vo- those volumes. Huh. Interesting. Would never see those. OVAs ever because it's hard to get OVAs over here nowadays. It is, unfortunately. <laughs> well, the one thing to look out for the manga because said he wants to continue the series, he just has no ideas for it at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. I might, to be fair, it? this is kind of like the concept is kind of one of those ones like eventually you are going to run out of steam on. Torny Sentai. Uh, anyway, uh, moving on to the next thing on the list. Next thing will probably take us, like, five minutes to deal with. Panty and stocking. Oh, boy. Fuck okay, you, let me go and get the flame from... Fuck, 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 yes, fuck, yes, fuck, yes, fuck. No, 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 no. <laughs> let's talk, let's talk about Gynax endings. And this is where me oh, boy. and Scotty sit back and let QB have his fun. Okay. Gynax endings are basically named after uh, Studio Gynax productions because, yeah, you get it. Basically, Gynax had this thing where they would just make endings that were just, what the feck? And they would just be like, out of nowhere, just insanity, just what the hell? So, like, Neon Genesis Evangelion is a big one. But then you get the crown prince of them all, which is Panty and Stockings. This ending is basically just, it comes out of nowhere, it makes no sense, and it was broadcast on Christmas Day. Happy Christmas, everyone. I can't believe they did that. <laughs> Probably did it to troll everyone. But yeah, basically that's... um. Yeah, it was based... So the original premise is they had their big final battle, but then the the two main characters... So basically the premise of the series is there are two angels, Panty and Stocking, they, have, they get kicked out of heaven for being, well, themselves. <laughs> and basically... So they have to, like, collect... They have to basically collect... What do they have to do? They have to defeat demons and, like... Defeat demons collect, and collect, collect coins. They collect coins, you know, to collect... And basically, yeah, but basically... So right at the end of the series, there's a plot twist where it's revealed that where Stocking, where Stocking kills Panty and basically says, oh, by the way, I'm a demon. And it just ends like that. Yeah, which is just like, what the fuck? It's basically just like, what? I mean, this was always what? a type of show that, like, it wasn't really anything that had, like, overarching plots or anything. It was it very was- much a, like, episode by episode kind of thing. And even the episodes were, like, split in half. It was based on American cartoons, Which, especially I mean, in the art style. I mean, yeah, you can like literally just see it with the picture that I've got up on screen. Like, this looks like such an American thing. This doesn't look that Japanese. But then it's like they did that ending. I'm just like, what the hell? I think they did it as a joke, but everyone was like, what? <laughs> and now I like 
But yeah, no, it would be like, kind of cool actually to see like more of this. But obviously, it has been so damn long since this show came out. The, and Guy Nine the, is not exactly what it used to be anymore. So the, the odds of the that pro- ever happening is a is is the is the thing. Most of the people who worked on it went over to to form another studio that no one's ever heard of called Trigger. <laughs> yeah, the guy who the guy who made Kill a Kill and Pro Mare. Same guy who made Panty and Stockings. I don't think he's going to make any more of this. No, obviously not. That ship has long since sailed, but... Yeah. We can hope and dream. Uh, pro, 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 uh, Premier was pretty good. seems to be focused on reviving a show from the 90s called Gridman. It's like, okay. <laughs> okay, that exists. That exists. Good job. Yep. Uh, I mean, it's a good show. Yeah. Uh, anyway, next one. All right, next up, we're going to let Scotty actually have some fun and talk. Interview with Monster Girls. I don't know this series because I've never seen it. I, I know of it, but I'll let Scotty take the stage. So, imagine if you will. Our main character, a teacher who is obsessed with figuring out what's up with these half-monster, half-human girls that are or half human people that are just appearing and, and intermingling with society now, and it's a very bad obsession. So he's now at a school where these demis, as they call them, do attend, and our main cast is made up of these. So, how do I put it? Chaos ridden. Oof, they make us look sane. Oh no. Especially, especially with the vampire chick. She's insane. Oh no. Don't so we have, have to watch our, this. our main character essentially just wants to understand how they go about their daily lives. Like the vampire, when he asks her questions like, do you have an aversion to garlic? How do you survive not drinking blood 24-7? You know, the boring stuff. Yeah. Meanwhile, she wants to... Yeah, sorry, go on. Meanwhile, she wants to... Uh, just do she she's a scoop she yeah, she wants to do that. Yeah. <laughs> she wants to so all the girls we have we have a vampire who is off a rock we have a Dolahan who's shy and doesn't like yeah. talking with people unless it's her friends we have a uh Yuki oh no snow woman who As the as the mangaka says, she has a taste for multiple genres, but doesn't like to specify what genres. Hmm. And there's a scene in the anime where she basically starts going, she starts like crazily laughing off to the side when somebody brings up the fact that one of her teachers is a succubus. We'll get to her. She's the best character. Yes, we will. But yeah, throughout the show, Takahashi, our main character, just basically talks with the girls on a daily basis. Some chaos ensues, but the ending for the show, which I'll get to, does kind of make, is the reason why I want the season two, because of the way it's set up. It's one of those, they probably were looking for a season two, but couldn't get one due to, because I think this was kind of a low popularity show, because not a lot of people I know watched it. I think it. I think it got like sort of like a mid, because I think like people, some people watched it. But it wasn't like popular, popular. But it got like people watched it. I mean, it's yeah. one of those shows you. It's not an action show, of course, because why would a show about interviewing most of the girls have action in it? It's just, it's a slice of life. You sit it down and watch it to relax. Now we, my favorite character in the show, and the reason that another reason I want the second season is because I want to see more of her is our I was wrong about her thing she's trying to be a math teacher and that's Saki she is a succubus yes. she's the best girl is trying to become a teacher without basically killing half of her students due to her being the epitome of horniness yep. she gets 
She wakes up early in the morning to get the first train in because there's no many people and she has to go on the last train back to her place, which is in the mountains, to be as far away from people as possible. Well, building. Has an extreme crush on the main character to almost a point because she thinks he's immune to her, which he isn't. He just has a very good poker face when she's standing right next to him. Yep. Especially in the scene when she walks in the bikini, but we won't get to that. That was a good bit. I think I've uh, I think I think Crunch is lost. I'm just listening. It's like I don't know the show. I'm just letting you guys have the floor. No, um, no. To be fair, it was from our old. I think it was from our old friend today. One that we mentioned earlier. It is a one pictures. Yeah. It, the it was one of their simplest. Good. Yeah, we have a good dub cast, a good Japanese cast as well. I think this was good because A1, A1 can't do action. Well, they can't do action as well as other studios, so they're better at like lower product. They're better. They're better at lower stake stuff. Now the reason I brought up the ending is at the end of the show, it's basically them starting a new year at the school, and of course that means new pupils. So we have a main character in his office talking with a new monster girl who's just started, who is an invisible girl. And you literally just see him basically feeling the air as he's trying to get a picture of her face in his mind. And it just flashes to, like, basically what the artist drew. For her, right. we get to we, we basically get to see her, even though he, the main character, can't see her. Huh. And I will admit, it's kind of boring. Where it's just basically kind of like a darker skin version of the dual hand with her head attached. <laughs> it's just sad because the dual hand with her head off is just funny. She's just like, Wee. I've got my head. I left my head in another city. My body's on the train. That happened. My head with the teacher, my body's with the vampire. Fun happens. It sounds, it sounds very bad, out of context. Yeah. 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 I just wanted so, to uh, get second season. I didn't actually... F- leading up to this recording, I didn't actually think of it, couldn't think of any shows, but then there was a watch right. party on a server I'm on and this show was on, I was like, God, I remember this show. Scotty's forgotten all the anime. <laughs> I don't watch that much now, so ones I did watch back when I had a lot more free time are kind of fading away. Uh, unfortunately, that'll happen to all of us. Yeah, we all fade away into nothingness. <laughs> Next um... one! <laughs> uh, Alright, so the... I was beginning to get philosophical there. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get uh, philosophical up in here. Weeb life. It brings out the philosophers in us. Anyway, yes. so the last entry on our list is one that is near and dear to me, and these two literally know almost nothing about, so this is going to be okay. them taking a nap. Okay, one minute. <laughs> Pretty much the... I, I, won't, uh, I won't be that mean. I won't be that... <laughs> Oh, I would have laughed actually if you had started like fake snoring. That would have been funny. Um, I'm not. I'm not going to be that douchey. I know. I just would have. Been, I still would have laughed at it. But yeah. Um, no. Um. Pretty much the entirety of the Tawaru franchise, or as I've come to nickname it simply, Raildex. Because Raildex featuring Raildex featuring Accelerator. <laughs> well, the picture I have on screen specifically is Accelerators because. His little sideshow has one another one of those. Um, here's a uh, teaser for something that is clearly setting up for a second season. And I also know from doing research and whatnot that um, while his side uh, storyline and thing is only like two arcs long, they could easily like take that second arc and turn it into an anime in and of itself, like they did with the first arc, where it doesn't have to be like a long one up. It'd be like a 12-episode one-shot, and that'd be good enough. But I'd say the whole franchise, because um, most of these... Actually, no. Two of them specifically, 
end in a way that's like, okay, you're clearly setting up for more. Give me more, which is Accelerator. And then the Magical Index mainline itself. But also, I also do want um, Railgun to continue as well. I understand for Railgun, that's going to take a while because the anime has actually kind of caught up to the manga. Like, I think the arc that the manga is currently on is the only one that has not been touched in the anime at all. So it's going to be a while before we see any more of the Railgun series. But in the meantime, they can there is a crap ton of Magical Index that they could be adapting for more epi- anime episodes and seasons. And then, of course, as I said, there's the other half of Accelerator show. And I really want to see that animated because Accelerator is, like, the best boy in this franchise. Once again, Austin Tyndall comes to uh, bring this character to life in the dub, and he is absolutely fantastic. I don't know why. I just love how, like, Austin in general just, like, gets all these, like, very psychotic characters, and he just pulls it off so beautifully. And, yeah. <laughs> Frickin' just everything. And, like, I know, like, with all the rest of these shows, we've, like, explained the premise for it. Magical Index, or just the Raildex franchise in general, is one of those ones, like, it is kind of hard to try and, like, explain everything, because it is a mixture of just all kinds of craziness. You've got, like, magical powers going on, you've got uh, people with Esper abilities, which fall under the realm of science, and then, like, all the shows, like, kind of, like, inter- like, the main show kind of, like, interjects between the two of them, so, like, you see, like, a lot of magic stuff, and then there's the science side of it, and then the s- railgun and accelerator focus more on the sciencey stuff. It's... I'm making it all sound very complicated and weird, but, like, it is a pretty fun franchise once you start diving into it. It's just a matter of actually, like, diving in. Because, like, there is so much of it. They live in a society. (laughs) They do. They live in a society where everything is superpowers and nothing makes sense. It's not just anime in general. That is very true. (laughs) But, yeah. I want more. This is, like... This is a franchise that I literally spent most of last year getting into because it's just like, you know, nothing really, not much to, like, I think it was like last year or like part of 2019 and then last year, so, Mm. yeah. I mean, it probably took, it probably took, uh, it's probably faster than how it took to catch up with One Piece. (laughs) Don't <laughs> get me started on that. One of my pals wants me to join him with that. I'm like, nope. Well, I mean, yeah, I, I, I just cheated and read the manga. Well, I mean, cheat let me, way. Let me think actually, because it's like, I think most of the seasons for Rail Decks, it's like 24 episodes for like, uh, and like 24 episodes a season for Railgun. So it's like 48. I can't do math. <laughs> it was like 24 uh, times 3 for Railgun, 24 times 3 for Index, and then 12 for Accelerator. So whatever that math adds let up me to. Get, let me get the calculator. I think that might be off by like 1 or 2, because I think like so some of them... Rail, so for Railgun and Magical Combined is 144, I believe? Yeah, so obviously, yeah, of course it's going to be faster than trying to go through one piece in a thousand plus episodes or whatever they're up to at this point. Uh, they are 960. Oh, wow. You're thinking, of, you're thinking of Detective Conan. That's going to fast a thousand episodes. For some reason, uh, that's the one where I'm like, okay, One Piece has a plot. What is this although, show's excuse? Although, the thing with One Piece, so... I will admit, as the show's got on, it's not that the show's gotten bad, it's just the plots are kind of blending together, but the animation just keeps improving. Like, I remember somebody saying uh, that, that a two-minute scene in One Piece had more frames in the third season of Seven Deadly Sins. Oh, no, don't get me started on <laughs> Do not get me started on that train wreck. Uh, no, move on. Move on. Back to Railtex. Back to Railtex. 
Well, uh, yeah, no, I've pretty much said my bit. So yeah, that's pretty much it for all the epi- or animes that we wanted to uh, bring up. There's probably like other ones that uh, would fit under this category too, but we just like didn't think of them. These are like the big ones for us, pretty much. I want you all to comment in the comment section what anime you'd like to get sequels. And then yeah, we'll get a sequel to this video. Yes. <laughs> and then and then and then I want you to subscribe and like this video. <laughs> do it. Uh, yeah. please please do it. Yeah. Oh well, mm. but yeah, now as we said at the beginning though, it's like seeing friggin' Devil is a part timer getting a sequel after so many years, like <sighs> It does kind of, like, boost hope for some of these other ones, and, like, hopefully it'll happen one day for uh, some of these shows to, like, get a continuation. I mean, for crying out loud, 2020 is, like, or 2021 is, like, the year of sequels. We've I mean, got, what's, what? airing, what's airing right now? I mean, you've got, like, friggin' uh, Reincarnated as a Slime has their second season running right now. Um, Doctor, Doctor Stone. Well, Dr. Stone, I feel like that one was kind of just, like, that was inevitable after how popular the first season was, but, like, Reincarnation Slime, Slime we've got How Not to Summon a Demon Lord getting, like, their second season after being it's off for, edgy. like, a few years. Too um, edgy for us. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. Mm. And then, you know, friggin' Part-Timer got theirs announced, I mean... It's just and there's like I know there's others that I'm not uh, remembering off the top of my head, but it's just like so many sequels this year, and it's so it's like hopefully some of these other ones will f- actually get a sequel treatment. Obviously, there's a few in here that no way that's ever gonna happen, but if only you know. We can dream, Harold. <laughs> Indeed. Uh... But yeah, on anyway. that note, um, I think we're pretty much done here. So thank you all for listening slash watching. And uh, as Gibby said, or, you know, whichever one of you two it was. Holy shit, my memory sucks. Yeah, comment <laughs> down below. What animes would you like to get sequels? It was me, by the way. Yeah, no, comment below. <laughs> like and subscribe, please. It helps us. Helps YouTube notice us, finally. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, no just a no. <laughs> Indeed, but yeah, <laughs> we will see you guys next yeah. time for whatever the fuck we end up doing. Later, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs>